So let's take a look at the um, and sort of the next step for light stage. So you're seeing, you've been seeing these heads that look really great. Can we do a full body? The answer is yes, uh, using a bigger light stage. So this next clip, uh, we'll be showing you light stage six, which is about 30 feet tall. It was built at USC. Uh, and on that stage, if you can see the character on the left, that's the real person on the light stage. The version on the right is his CG counterpart. And what's interesting is that you're not just getting the body movement or the facial expressions, you're getting every single, everything that's in the light stage. In other words, his clothes, the folds in his jeans, all of that gets captured. There's absolutely no difference between the, the real version and the CG version. And all those kids that were five videos back asking for characters that looked real and things that looked real, well, this is it. It's here today. It's, it's been here for a while. It's just been in a lab. And now it's going to be in your games. It's going to be in your films. Uh, let's play the whole thing through and let's take just another look at how LightStage works and, and what kind of results you get from it. So the LightStage itself is filled with thousands of LED lights, many high-speed cameras that capture thousands of frames a second. Uh, it doesn't quite do it justice to watch the LightStage in action. These lights are all blinking on and off so quickly, the human eye can't really see. It just looks like they're all on. But if you slow down the high-speed cameras, you can actually see the, um, how the LightStage works. It essentially is capturing how every single one of those lights uh, individually bounces off of this character. And then there's a lot of software that takes that data and turns it into those realistic characters that you've seen in these videos. Uh, that's a pretty remarkable way of approaching the problem. And it's the only way, really, I think, that you can get completely real assets. And the license isn't just being used for characters. Um, in this particular example, you know, we're seeing here how the camera can be moved around these characters, how the lighting can change. You can just duplicate an asset with a light stage and have two or a hundred of the same actor in, in a scene. That's remarkable. Uh, one of the things that we're pushing forward by the end of the year is to have a light stage that's capable of scanning in uh, static objects at such high details that if we're ever to create a device that was haptic, tactical, you would, we're going to scan it in at a higher resolution and have that, the bumps on that surface at such high detail at 32,000 points per inch that really, if you ever turn that into a 3D physical model, the human finger can only fill 25,000 points per inch. We're going to be able to really capture tactically and visually anything that we want and have that data set ready. So, you know, if one day they ever build a holodeck, well, this data could drive that. And that's very, very, very exciting. But capturing and rendering this data is only one aspect of how this can be used. If you look at video games, you know, one of the charms of, of the video game world is that you can take data and you can do anything to it. Anything can happen in any frame. So taking that data and, and being able to manipulate the light stage data is really the next field of research uh, for us. And we're actually very, very, very proud and excited to announce uh, that LightStage is partnering with Image Metrics, a wonderful company that develops amazing facial capture animation software. Uh, in fact, Nick Parrott from Image Metrics is here to answer your questions afterwards if, if you want to ask him about some of the work we're about to show. Uh, so Image Metrics combined with LightStage gives us a pretty remarkable result, uh, which we're going to show you. Let's just play that video and uh, take a look at Emily. Image Metrics is a markerless performance-driven animation company. We specialize in high-quality facial animation for video games and films. Uh, so the amazing thing about this Emily video, it's different than that light stage head you saw earlier. The reason is that her animation, the thing that's driving her face, can come from any one of us. It can come from any kid with a webcam because image metric software takes just regular video and tracks every single muscle in your face. You match that to the light stage data set and you get you get this. This is, this is a virtual actor that is completely independent of the person driving that performance. Let's, in fact, go to the next slide and show a little bit of, about how this process works with these completely virtual characters. We just have to scan in 20 to 40 different facial poses. Uh, that plugs right into image metrics uh, software that is then able to take those 40 poses and, and give you a character like Emily that can be driven potentially in real time. Similarly, if we were to do more effort, we can actually bring back actors that have passed on or actors or characters that were never real just by scanning in, for example, uh, uh, a sculpture created by master effects artist Rick Baker. So the possibilities are amazing. Let's just think about virtual worlds populated with characters like Emily, driven by, let's say, a webcam that can make these characters respond to how your face is in real time, in worlds that look completely real. That really fulfills, I think, one of the many promises of Cinema 2.0. Uh, so I think you've seen a lot of amazing stuff all of this stuff relates to capturing and rendering reality. Now, how do you project that? How do you 
display this and get, and, and in a way that is even more real than a 2D monitor. Because in a lot of ways, the LightSage data, all this work, it's much more than what you can see on a screen filled with a bunch of pixels. And you know, it really has been at AMD's urging and prodding that we're sort of trying to, we're going to push the envelope a little bit more. So we're going to show you something that hints at the next steps of where we're going. Let's roll the next video and take a look. Uh, this video was actually, and, and this project you're seeing, was done by the, the same group that, uh, in fact, created the light stage. And uh, this was actually shown at SIGGRAPH last year, and it won an award, and it was, I think it's very impressive. So you're going to see this as, it's, you know, the various stages of its development, but as you can see here, this device projects any 3D object as a floating freeform hologram in the air. You don't need glasses to look at it. Uh, it, just, it just exists. There it is. Uh, you know, where this is going is, is very interesting. I mean, this, this is just a black and white version. Um, the, you know, the, also, the speed at which, it, at, at which it's you know, rendered and driven is something that can actually be tied to a real-time system. So you can see here that uh, you know, he's driving that head in real-time. The lag is about equivalent to what you see on a monitor. Uh, for getting color, uh, you know, essentially, you just need more power. You just need to scale the system up and, and, and render more per, more per second. Uh, this is, these are the first tests in color. Uh, of course, what's interesting is can you render a real object uh, like this one, for example? And uh, the answer is, yeah, you can. And this, at this point, we're, we're at Star Wars, at the level of Star Wars, where Princess Leia is, is, is giving her message from R2-D2. I mean, this is sci-fi made real. But I think what the most exciting promise of this technology is the light stage data that you've been seeing that looks so good, this projector was designed to render that data. And this, I think, is the future for, uh, for many, many, many industries. And it's just the beginning. So it's very exciting to be able to show you this. And I'm sure that uh, as we progress with this technology and as you see the next steps over the next few months that we're doing with AMD, you'll be very, very excited. Uh, and uh, it's been an honor and a pleasure to show all this. Thank you very much. The, the power of Cinema 2.0 has been shown here today, and it's not, it's not the big things, it's the subtle, it's the nuance that, that Cinema 2.0 allows. I, I really believe that Cinema 2.0 is going to usher in a new level of expectation people have for the, for the user experience. 